啊，什么叫精英治理啊？怎么样去建设社区啊？怎么样去经营一个社区，然后让它茁壮啊长大？接下来呢是这个呃 ，David Lally 更精彩啊，他这个是慢慢的，但是很清楚的啊，把这这个在云计算里面、容器技术里面碰到的困难呢，跟大家来做分享，而且啊，提出很尖锐、很困难的问题。那在场有好几个观众也问，提出很尖锐的问题，他也这个呃回答的非常清晰哈。那么，呃，刚刚呢 ，Jason 呢，他所提的这个这个内容，就是呃，从开源社区建设治理到云计算到大数据啊，所以今天这个呃，业界的这大牛们，大家都能够跟大家做深入的分享，深入浅出啊。尤其 Jason 这个讲的，我觉得非常好。以前我不是那么了解，今天哎，好像听懂了一点了，非常好，非常这个精彩的分享。那么下面下来呢？呃，只有单项的这个一些介绍，但是我们后面会有一个非常精彩的呃这个高峰的对话啊、呃。那我现在呢，把我们这个呃四位的来宾，那么其中我还多请了一位在中国开源社区的啊、呃，在这个软件行业里面的呃领袖人物啊、呃，云浪生云总。那等一下一起介介绍，他是微软中国开放技术中心的董事总经理，那负责是这个中国呃地区的这个开呃开放技术中心的团队组建。推动整个呃公司的开源工程啦、啊、标准啦、啊、呃社区参与啊等等啊，那他是在这个呃推动整个地区的呃这个中国这方面的互操作性啦、啊、开放标准、开源软件的开发项目这些。那么他在呃云总呢，云浪生云总在加入呃微软之前是在 Autodesk 啊负责整个研发的团队。那么加入微软也给我们带来很多啊、呃、新的冲击、新的理念跟新的改变。那么我们现在邀请啊、呃，刚刚这个几位是 speaker 啊、呃、，Brad Porter、David Nelly， 还有 Jason， 啊，大家一起上台，然后还有云总。那么今天我们这个高峰对话的精彩高峰对话主持人是 Kevin 黄宏文啊，他是我们亚太这个 Open Innovation Network 啊、呃、亚太区的联盟总监啊，我交给这个呃 Kevin 黄宏文。So I guess we don't need to introduce them because everyone probably know them already. Uh, today it's more about Apache and how the foundation helps to organize and to help the community work. So first, I would like to know, like, well, personally, I have uh, my privilege as the host. I would like to know how the uh, so-called meta uh, methodology. How how that work? How that principle be adapted in the community and also in uh, adapt in the in uh, a company or enterprise? Because it's very different, right? It's a uh, in a company you have probably here. Because I work for some large company, it's a quite bureaucratic, but you are quite free, quite free, right? So how that could be adapted in the in the company? Okay, uh, am I? I think yes, this is giving some feedback, so. Uh, yeah, maybe I should use the the other. All right. Uh, yes. Yeah, so. Uh, for the open source, uh, the the community led style of development uh, is something that uh, works with companies in two different ways. So. Uh, when we have an open source project, like at the Apache Software Foundation, uh, there are ways in which companies can uh, encourage their uh, employees to come and participate in those projects, and so that they are able to uh, be able to work together with the open source community to develop that software. Um, but there's also the concepts of having a community-led uh, effort of development is something that com companies can also use inside their own uh, organizations. So in the past we've had uh, some people talk about this at our Apache conferences. Um, in particular there was a, an excellent presentation by one of our members, uh, Phil Stites, 
who talks about open development in the enterprise and the ways in which those concepts that come out of the open source community can actually help enterprises to improve the methods that they use to build uh, their own software. So how about from Citrix or from Intel or from Microsoft? You know, so when, when you look at how the Apache Software Foundation uh, develop software, how they have this uh, meritocratic, relatively flat uh, environment uh, as far as um, you know, there's not really an authority figure um, in, in projects. Uh, everyone on the PMC or every committer is effectively a peer and that is something that is relatively difficult to model in a company uh, within, within Citrix. I find that things like my title actually matter and uh, depending upon who I'm interacting with and their title or position in the company, uh, I may be more or less effective. Whereas within a community uh, that, is, that is more meritocratic, it depends upon your specific experience, your specific expertise and what you have done within that community. Uh, and so that is challenging for, uh, for companies to pull off because they have to set aside the, uh, the structure that they have set up in the first place as far as authority figures and, and other things. Uh, that doesn't mean that it is impossible, but it means that you know, within the framework of actually doing development that you have to be willing to set aside uh, things like titles and, and positions uh, and focus on actually delivering the product and doing that in a meritocratic way. Uh, I agree with <laughs> everything you said. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, in, well, Intel first, first, Intel loves open source, and secondary, uh, but to, to as the organization is a structurally or uh, maybe product project related structure, you have to set some of the hierarchy or structure. But uh, again, I mean, in, in the engineering, in the technology, I mean, when the engineers or technologists interact, I think we actually, the open source will actually help a lot for you to act, interact and uh, build uh, the uh, technology roadmap and the technology um, decisions. But uh, again, the, this is in a large context that you, yeah, you do have a structure for your organization or for your project. Hello. Uh, so, can, so speak English or Chinese? <laughs> okay, that's fine. Uh, either way. Uh, so, you know, for Microsoft, uh, you know, we uh, just Jason said, uh, you know, why Intel is, uh, you know, somewhere. I think, uh, you know, if uh, a few years ago, if uh, you know someone from Microsoft uh, at a conference like this, uh, I think everyone would ask uh, why Microsoft are here. <laughs> uh, that's certainly, uh, you know, a question. But I think. Uh, uh, over the years, the Microsoft has certainly evolved, especially since last year, we have uh, uh, our new CEO and, uh, and on board. And as the company has totally changed, I think, you know, uh, it's hard to imagine uh, a few years ago, you would have, uh, you know, the, the crown jewel of Microsoft, like uh, Office products, uh, you know, uh, be available on iOS, uh, Android, right? Uh, I think now it's uh, you know part of the uh, norm. Uh, nobody question that anymore. That's even uh, inside the company. Uh, I think that's uh, a good indication of uh, you know where uh, the time has changed. I think the Microsoft has cha changed as well. Uh, you know, you know, of course, you know, it's uh, it's not an easy decision. Actually, you know, talk about uh, the process. You know, talk about the journey. Uh, to come to uh, where we are. Uh, I think, uh, you know, if you, uh, you know, just you know, as one example, uh, the, uh, the Office uh, version for, you know, Office version for iOS uh, has been, the, you know, was done quite a few years ago. Uh, quite, quite a few years ago, but uh, uh, it was just always, you know, put on the shelf. And uh, it was only Last year, since the new CEO got on, you know, the new CEO Satya, uh, you know, made the decision then to make it available, uh, you know, to release it. Uh, not just re really release it, but also uh, it's okay to have, 
uh, to have a new version available on OS Android before you actually have on the Windows system. Uh, I think if you look at it as a whole, uh, Microsoft look at uh, this um, open source and as part of the uh, what we call the overall openness. It's just one component of it. You know the. Uh, if you talk about uh, the openness, and uh, you can have uh, multiple components, right? You know, open source, of course, is uh, a very important part. And then there's, uh, you know, the community, you know, like Apache, you know, community. If there's no community, there's no open source. It's just, uh, you know, that simple. And also interop, open standards, uh, are all part of the uh, uh, the whole openness, you know, sort of concept that uh, we are. Uh, actually advocating at Microsoft. Right, but, well, usually company have the, your decision, your strategy, your direction, right? But community, they might have a different opinion. How you, from every company, to massage or to embrace each other? Okay, I, I think that's a good question for everyone, right. not just right, for, right, right, right. for Microsoft. Right. Uh, I, I think that if you look at uh, uh, the overall community involvement, right? That's uh, uh, no matter is uh, established, uh, you know, sort of company or established uh, um, uh, or like Microsoft or like someone else. I think that's always been a challenge. If you look at the data uh, from uh, GitHub, right? Uh, I don't really remember exact time. Maybe it's uh, like a two percent or something like that. You know, really has you know uh, really have a good community around. And the ninety-eight uh, percent really don't of the you know the projects, right? Uh, I, I think that's uh, it's uh, uh, that's also the core of the issue around uh, uh, around uh, open source development. Uh, you know that's why I think uh, uh, where Apache Foundation has been uh, really successful. You know we talk about uh, in the community uh, is uh, in over code, right? And I think that's. Uh, uh, always the challenge, you know. From my, from Microsoft point of view, uh, you know, we also, uh, you know, try. I think it's still very much in a learning process. I have to say, you know, we established the .NET Foundation uh, last year, and the uh, open source the .NET Core, and uh, and also we uh, try to participate in other uh, open source development as well. Not not just uh, uh, contribute to the existing open source software. Uh, but it was open source our own uh, as well. Um, I, I think it's uh, uh, even in, in China, right? In China, I think uh, you know part of uh, uh, open source technology center its mission uh, really is to uh, if, uh, to really bridge uh, you know what uh, uh, Microsoft can offer in the open source area and uh, with the open source com community. Um, I think there's tons of work needs to be done uh, there, and, and I, I can just I can almost can write a book just about these things. Uh, yeah. Thanks. So I, I think you're asking about the sort of competing interests between priorities for companies and, and open source projects. So there's definitely that sort of tension that exists when a, a company is invo involved in open source, which is also uh, a wider community. Uh, but as mentioned, the, uh, one of the strengths that we have seen in Apache is that uh, as those different uh, contributors come together from different places and they have this common ground that they can work on, uh, they do have the ability to produce something that is of benefit to, to everyone that's involved. Uh, and then they have uh, the opportunity there to focus on what they can add that's their own value uh, and, and do that in their own uh, sphere of influence. So it's, it's definitely something that's challenging and brings tension into the communities, but the, giving the community the power to kind of set that direction and then uh, allowing uh, companies the opportunity to bring their own value uh, to the outside is one of the ways that we help to improve that. I think that when, as a company, you're looking at this, it, it, it helps to be looking at the long-term investment long-term investment is that you want uh, the best technology, you want the best software product delivered. And I think that if you look at open source communities, 
uh, that do community-led development, uh, like the Apache Software Foundation does, you tend to see a string of successes, whether that's uh, technology like Hadoop or the Apache Web Server or Tomcat. Uh, there's a number of successes that you can point to, uh, and you know that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, at a given point in time or a specific quarter that it wasn't uh, always in the best interest of a specific company. Uh, one of the things that makes uh, the Apache Software Foundation and a number of other open source projects unique is that companies have no standing. Uh, the fact that I am employed by Citrix doesn't mean anything to anyone at Apache. Uh, the, you know, the, the president of the Apache Software Foundation is employed by Microsoft. And, you know, a number of years ago, that would have been unthinkable, except no one at the Apache Software Foundation cares who his employer is. And, uh, and that separation of uh, who's employing you, who's paying you to do things, and doing what is right for the project uh, is, I think, key to the success. But it's, to be clear, it's a long-term investment, because if you're looking at, at short-term decision-making, uh, it is going to often be contrary to what an individual company may want. Yeah, I, I think um, everyone says very well. Uh, I, I think I have only two things to add. I mean, actually, I think there's uh, pre two pretty, pretty simple principles. First, you want to build just a right technology that the user loves, so it's, um, which makes it a lot easier for, for you to work with the community. And the secondary, be a good community citizen, say, adopt the Apache way, so, which, which makes it much easier. Yeah, so I see the attendees today must should be student, right? Am I right? Okay, so you talk about long-term investment. So then it's part of the investment to join this community or this, this speech. So what can you, you guys can give them a reason or some incentive or motivation why they should spend more time on open source or Apache uh, Software Foundation or, or any open source project? Uh, I think it's, there's many different reasons that it's valuable for people, especially uh, who are students, to get involved in open source software. So the, the level of experience that you can gain from working with people who've uh, you know, been in this community for some time and uh, they're involved in many different companies, many different locations around the world, uh, there's, there's a lot that you can learn from uh, other people that you're involved with and I've found that myself, the, the types of people that I've been able to meet through the community has uh, been exceptional. Uh, and, and also the contributions that you make are something that are going to be around uh, and part of a, a bigger picture as well. So the value that uh, you're able to, to get out of making that contribution, it's not something that's going to be locked up in a small project somewhere off to the side, but it's actually something that's investing in the future of uh, many of these technologies. I find that people uh, are looking constantly at what I have done in public. Uh, so they're looking at uh, code that I have contributed to various projects. They're looking at things that, uh, that I have written, uh, talking about those projects. And if I were working on a, uh, you know, on a proprietary project, for instance, most of that would be hidden away. No one would ever see that or see what I've done. Uh, so in some ways, Open source is a way of publicly showing your expertise. It's also a way of uh, you know, being able to collaborate and work on really interesting uh, topics. Um, you know, if you want to work on machine learning or you want to work on uh, workload management, uh, those opportunities are available because we don't require that you uh, be employed to work on that kind of a project. So if you have a particular interest, you can start building expertise there by working on some of those projects. Uh, and I know a number of folks who have become the de facto expert because of their contribution in certain uh, areas of open source uh, software. Uh, they then become the company expert on that particular technology or that particular area of, of technology. Uh, especially for the students, if you want to go to, say, industry, 
put your GitHub ID on your resume and, <laughs> and comma. <laughs> and people will see your comma. Yeah, but and if you want to go to research, actually getting your research idea into the open source project is the, probably the best way to get it used by everyone in the industry. I, I think that's a, that's a very interesting uh, point. You see a lot of research, right, being done, and then no one ever is able to take advantage of it. And occasionally, you'll see places like Berkeley's AMP Lab, where they'll take something like Mesos or Spark that was developed in research and then open sourced. Uh, and now everyone's talking about things like Mesos and Spark. It, it's really, uh, it has a much larger effect than if that was kept just as research. Uh, I think it's you know, plenty has been said. I think it's really just a great way to learn, uh, to get involved, to contribute. Uh, you know, think about it as, uh, uh, you know, you have the freedom to pick out, you know, what you want to work on and uh, what, uh, you know, you're interested in and also be able to find uh, a group of people, uh, like-minded people, you know, that would be a community to work on, to work on things together. You know, it's something really exciting. You know, at least, you know, for me, it's, uh, uh, you know, if, uh, you know, in Chinese, uh, say, 志同道合, right? If you can find a group of people that's uh, and you know have fun together and be able to contribute uh, and also have a sense you are accomplishing something that's a benefit that would benefit uh, not so to yourself and also to the you know the, 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 the bigger community and the people you care about uh, that's a great feeling I think that's really uh, something I I would cherish myself as well, yeah. So I, I personally see most of the open source projects are uh, original from overseas, US or Europe. But I also see some recent uh, project initial from China, from like database or middleware. So anything you can, any, any uh, thing of, uh, or recommendation you can give us how this project can attract more overseas contributor to make their project most successful and and then grow up. Is it? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a very tough question and to be honest we often face that question in reverse as well. So there's a lot of projects that originate uh, and we're struggling to find uh, ways to get other people involved that are from other locations. And I think that's, um, that's really a big, big challenge for everyone to tackle. Uh, the, the, and the use of making connections with different uh, people is probably the, the main thing that we need to rely on here is that uh, it, these communities are quite flat but everyone has their sort of own uh, perspective to bring into it and so I think the, the main thing is just to be open and, and welcoming to uh, you know, uh, different perspectives on this. Right, because in the old time, when I work for Canonical for Ubuntu, I almost don't sleep. Because <laughs> my co-workers, they, they, are, they are from Europe, from East, and they are everywhere, right? And <laughs> yeah, so it's a time zone issue, language issue, and location issue. So the time zone issue can be dealt with a little bit, and, and this is something that I think Apache has gotten right. Um, uh, at this point, it's intentional, but I, I don't know that it was necessarily the original intent. Um, by doing so many things on a mailing list, that tends to be asynchronous in communication. So you can miss you know, eight hours and actually get sleep and not have to be awake in the middle of the night because it's going to be on the mailing list and you'll see that email the next day. Um, I, I do think that it's interesting. So one of the projects I'm involved in, CloudStack, um, we see 30% of our web traffic that's coming to look at our documentation that's downloading software coming from China. But we have very few uh, Chinese committers. We have, we have a Chinese uh, mailing list, but you know, Compared to the amount of uh, people clearly consuming CloudStack, uh, the amount of traffic on those lists is, is very small. And so I would, uh, I would ask the question in reverse is, how do we get uh, Chinese uh, people to participate in, in projects that we have? Because I don't have a solution necessarily for, for, uh, for solving 
that, although we would welcome seeing more, uh, more Chinese projects, uh, more projects from Asia in general, coming to places like the Apache Software Foundation. You should get more Chinese committed. <laughs> <laughs> and ask them to recommend. Seriously, for, actually, for, for, instance, for Spark, we actually do see a lot of contribution coming from the Chinese developer community. Because we do have several good Chi well, Chinese-speaking <laughs> committees who can actually talk to the people and we can encourage them to contribute and so on. Yeah. Oh, sorry, this is a uh, look from uh, eBay, from uh, Apache Kili. So, answer David's question is uh, how you engage the contributor and the committers from China. So, we are very good example for you. <laughs> so, the entire developer team of Apache Kili is located in Shanghai, in China. We also engage the many uh, contrib uh, contributors and even committers and even PRC members from China, from like uh, Meituan, from uh, Mining Lamp, from even like uh, uh, as a, a big giant from uh, uh, China. So, yeah, I think this is a uh, good uh, news for the community and for everyone who want to join to Apache to as uh, like an open source community. Mm. Thank you. Uh, I think it goes both ways. It goes both ways. You know, as uh, David just said, uh, you know, how to uh, get, uh, you know, more committers, you know, from China. Right? I think uh, uh, you, you definitely there's this trend, there's more and more usage. And uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, but uh, uh, the number of committers is not uh, increasing at the same rate as the usage. <laughs> That's, uh, uh, I think there's uh, you know, quite, uh, uh, you know, you know we, we talk about those you know, uh, uh, very often, you know, why, why right? I think there's uh, a lot of reasons. One of the reasons, yeah, of course, language, I think, is, is the issue. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not just about uh, uh, whether you can speak a little bit of English or not. Right? It's, uh, it's about uh, how the, the culture aspect of it and then how do you engage and then how, the, how do you work in a group or how, uh, you know, the, uh, the, you know, how, to, how, how do you govern, you know, how do you work with a community that's governed by certain rules. So that's uh, actually is not uh, so natural to our culture. Uh, I think that all those things play uh, play a uh, you know, very factor. So I, I don't see, you know, a silver bullet. So if you just do this, then you, you will see the number of committers, you know, go, go up spike. Uh, I think it's, uh, uh, it takes things like what we are doing right now and, uh, you know, try to bridge the gap, uh, you know, so try to, uh, be, you know, bring in the, uh, you know, like a patch foundation, you know, the other, uh, you know, successful, uh, open source community and to be in touch with the uh, China, you know, in China, you know, with the developers in China, and try to learn uh, from each other. Uh, that uh, will gradually, you know, help with our cause. And also, uh, you know, within China, we have established uh, uh, op uh, like uh, Kai Yuan Shi, right? This is an open source alliance. You know, the, the purpose of Kai Yuan Shi is specifically, you know, is focused on you know, the issues we talked about. Uh, how to foster a healthy community within China. How do we bridge, uh, you know, the Chinese community uh, with the international, you know, international open source community. You know, all the things, I think, takes time. Um, but, uh, you know, I definitely can see the progress even just within these uh, couple of years. So uh, I'm very hopeful. It's slow, but I'm very hopeful. So we have about less than 10 minutes. I mean, for you guys to have a question for all the guests. Um, I have a question. Um, so I'm a Feng Zhao. Uh, hi. Um, so uh, David, you mentioned that uh, Spark was actually came out of uh, Amp Lab, um, and uh, which is a, a great example that university did some uh, uh, research, and uh, then they decided that the best way to go to market is actually to take it out. Um, but uh, do you see actually companies does that as well, or how do you encourage companies to do that? You know, often I see is a company actually take a open source branch and uh, they actually uh, kind of fork it and they develop within a company and they don't actually uh, put it back into the community uh, as, uh, as say university would do. Um, do you see actually this is something changing in the US, but also in particular in China, 
do you see that uh, the Chinese company might, might actually work differently? Because the fact that, that the open source probably is going to be more central to the business than, say, perhaps in the U.S. So I think there are a number of, of good examples of companies open sourcing software. Um, Cassandra, which was open sourced by Facebook, uh, is, a, is an example. Um, the company I work for, Citrix, open sourced uh, CloudStack. Uh, it was actually previously under an open source license, but we moved it to the Apache Software Foundation to get independent governance. Uh, there's, there's a long list of projects that you'll see uh, coming out of companies, uh, especially in the big data market. Uh, there are, um, it seems like every other week, there's uh, something being proposed by Intel, something being proposed by uh, Microsoft, something being proposed by uh, Hortonworks, Cloudera, uh, a number of those companies. So whether it's the Facebook model where they have something useful that they open source or it's uh, where they're making a component of a product open source, I do see a lot of companies doing that. We do see a lot of companies, uh, and I call this bad behavior, I think it's bad behavior, uh, even when it's my own employer doing it, uh, where they will fork from the open source project and, uh, and develop internally, or at least develop internally first. Uh, I think most people find out, and I, I think we've seen this over uh, time, uh, most people find out real quickly that it gets very expensive to maintain a fork. Uh, there is a lot of additional development overhead because you also want all of the, uh, the advances, the, the additional development that the community is doing uh, inside your code base. You want the improvements, you want the bug fixes. And if you're having to constantly merge those in and manage the, the patch set, uh, it is uh, a lot more expensive. I think. Uh, the folks who find this out the most are, are folks who do embedded Linux, uh, and you know they're maintaining sometimes 60,000 uh, different patches on top of what the community is releasing, and and that's very expensive in the terms of man years uh, for for each minor release. But but if I may add, um, a company who is in this business uh, use the open source probably want to differentiate a bit from other people. So you think actually this is entirely complementary or um, they want to withhold certain parts of their innovation so that uh, they can actually have a little edge in the marketplace. There are companies who do that. Um, I don't know of a lot of companies who do that very successfully. Um, there are if you look at the people who have actually made large amounts of money on open source software, they tend to be um, very much all in. Uh, Red Hat is the shining example there. Um, the, and their value add is, is in support and in adding additional, uh, adding additional stability, not in, not in feature differentiation. But I think uh, there are play people who try that. I don't know how successful they are to be to be perfectly honest. Uh, yeah, maybe just to add, so there's a point at which having uh, the core code available as open source can become a competitive advantage for them as well. So for any of their users who are concerned about being locked into a solution, uh, then the availability of the code under open source and the fact that there's a community around that actually gives a lot more confidence to the people who they're trying to market to. Uh, and I think the, the thing, as David was alluding to, is it needs to be something that's genuine, though. If you start to try and hold things back, that's going to just increase that tension. Uh, if you do have something which is, at its core, open, and then have uh, a business which is complementary to that, then the benefits can be for everyone. Uh, I have one question about quality management because I used to manage both uh, dev and test team and I see the test, uh, uh, the quality is a critical issue when your system has more than one million less of code. Uh, so I want to know how, do, uh, how does Apache manage uh, the qualities of the projects including test strategy, your quality bar 
and how do you uh, uh, control the efforts uh, to test and the best known methods, this kind of things. Thank you. So I, I think the short answer is that the foundation does not. Um, that is, we do not interfere with our individual projects and how they direct themselves. Um, Brett will probably say more about this, but from an Apache Software Foundation perspective, we recognize that communities will have to garner their own interest. People will have to be interested in contributing to them. And if they are releasing poor quality code, people will not be interested and thus the project will die. And that is, that, that's part of the natural life cycle. If they do a poor job managing their own project, the project will go away at some point. Uh, yeah, not particularly much to, to add to that. I think, uh, as you said, the, the quality is, is very important, but it's something that we give the projects the responsibility to look after themselves. And many of the, the very successful projects, that's actually an area where uh, some contributors have been able to bring their own value into the project. So uh, there's, there's particular organizations which focus just on adding additional layers of testing and uh, external frameworks that go around the Apache projects and they can uh, verify that and then offer support to their own customers. Okay, thank you. Uh, I still have a <clears throat> question that I haven't been on, uh, to address that. I want to use a story about, probably about the why the uh, uh, commuters or contributors from China uh, are not that much. Now, one story that uh, one Chinese then, uh, he learned English not long ago, and then he went to a vacation place, and he said, text her, her wife a good message, says, I wish you, you were here, right? And her wife got really, really upset. Said, what the heck did you send? Then they got divorced, like, all right? You know why? Because the Chinese, I wish you were here. And the, he left out a, an E in the last place, in the last. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it got, I wish you were her, right? And that's a cultural difference. Now, I want to address that. Uh, uh, Ross got a gobbler. He pitched a uh, presentation in the uh, Apache Con in the U.S. in April, right? <laughs> to increase the Apache diversity. So I want to throw the challenge at you, and I hear them. How? What do you think? Is that diversity, including the geographic uh, uh, coverage and the uh, you know gender coverage? You know, is there any thought on that uh, for the Apache Software Foundation going forward? Yeah, I'd encourage anyone uh, to have a look at that particular presentation that Ross did. Um, it's available on YouTube and uh, he goes into quite a bit of detail to cover some of the challenges that we've had at Apache, but also uh, some ways in which we can improve that. It's definitely something that's very important for us to do with intention. So it's not something that's just going to happen, uh, but rather you need to put specific effort into it. Uh, and I think the, the answers to that are going to be both global and local, if you can put it that way. So across the whole uh, project, there needs to be support for that sort of uh, effort happening. But you also need very specific initiatives where people who are passionate about this can actually get into the local environment uh, or into that particular subset of the community and help to work on encouraging and uh, bringing about the types of change that needs to happen. I think it is a struggle. Uh, someone noted um, we had a conference in Europe uh, a year ago, and someone noted that uh, Apache's diversity was measured between um, white males with beards and white males without beards. <laughs> and, and by all accounts, we fail in being diverse, whether it's measured in geography, gender, uh, or you know, any other measurement. We, we tend to be, um, sadly, too monocultured. Uh, and it's something that we care about changing. Um, we want, uh, uh, we realize that that is a deficiency in our part because there is great benefit to having different perspectives. Uh, and 
it's something we're trying to consciously um, improve. Um, but it's, you know, like Brett said, it, it's, uh, it's also something that we can't mandate from on high. Um, and it's, it's going to be up to individual projects in many ways. Uh, although the foundation itself certainly wants to encourage that, um, we can't go to, you know, the Tomcat project and say, hey, go find some people from Asia or go find females and make them committers. Um, it, it's a very complex problem that, that uh, we care about and it's also, you know, we feel a little powerless to, to, um, to make changes because I can't magically say, hey, everyone, come show up and we'll get you involved. Although if you come show up, I'll help get you involved. Um, that's that's the, uh, the biggest, uh, for the communities that I'm involved in, if you want to get involved, I'm happy to help you. Um, but uh, at the same time, the Apache Software Foundation has over 200 project communities, and very few of us are involved in more than a few at a time. So. So yeah, I have a uh, one question. So you talk about uh, how uh, you would like to like uh, uh, people from China to um, contribute more to the Apache uh, uh, community. But I have another angle of view. So actually, Frank Talk, uh, uh, Apache Software Foundation ha uh, ha has disconnected with China a long time, right? Before this, five years, right? to have such like a meetup conference here. But you know, uh, China ha has the biggest population here. That means we have the biggest developers community here. So beyond today's event, I would like to know, is there any like a strategy or collaboration or whatever from ASF uh, side would to come to China? Thank you. Okay. Um. <laughs> I, I can't reveal any secrets there. No, uh, it's, uh, it, as, as was mentioned in the previous talk, so Ross as the president is something that he felt like it was how he'd personally like to improve on, and there are other people in uh, the foundation who feel that way. Uh, and I think that's the, the main thing that we can do is to actually get them together and support them. So uh, we have a, a number of different volunteers who are interested. and. Obviously, this is a great place for us to come and to be able to take that opportunity and uh, gather up anyone who is interested in working on that together. I, I think one of the challenges that we have is um, we have a priority about it and we care about it. And at the same time, virtually everyone who's working at the Apache Software Foundation is a volunteer, which means making a trip uh, to come do a roadshow like this means they're taking time off of work or they're having to get their employer to, to authorize it. Um, it also costs money. I mean, the, the sponsors here who put this on uh, contributed a lot of money to, to provide the venue, to provide uh, things like lunch, and, and you know, that, that is expensive. And uh, if you looked in Brett's slides, uh, the total foundation budget is a million dollars. And there's not a lot of money uh, in, the, um, in the foundation budget to be allocated for that. So uh, yes, there are a lot of people who care deeply about it. Some of us are fortunate enough to have employers that will support it. Uh, but there's you know, how we make that work for, uh, for a larger group is, is a challenge. We've got to figure out a way to do that. Um, there, there's actually been a lot of conversation around how we funnel, you know, maybe what we need to do is prioritize sending people to more conferences. And I see Aaron wanting to talk. So. Uh, so you don't want to send these people back to China to tell you. Thank you guys, thank you guys, thank you guys, thank you guys, thank you guys. So you can run your own communities. You can do your own events. Uh, open source doesn't belong to Brett, or to me, or to Nicholas, to David, to any of us. Uh, it belongs to the global community. Uh, I think that's one of the things we want to emphasize here. 
Uh, don't let this be the only Apache event you do. Run your own. So, you pull in Shara Ganga, Zijia Ran Jen Zijia Kao Ha. John Kai Yan Si. All right, we have one minute, so if we can have one last question. <laughs> I, 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 I want to add something while we're waiting for that one last question. Um, he's right. We talk about ownership of a project, and there's not really anyone who has that. The people who contribute have as much say as anyone else, and so, you know, it's nice having Brett, who's the chairman of the Apache Software Foundation, but he really doesn't have any authority over the projects themselves, <laughs> right? Um, I, I mean, he's not going to go tell Luke how he's supposed to run uh, Apache Kylan. Uh, he's not going to tell anyone else how to do anything. Um, we have the interesting titles. Titles don't mean authority. They mean that uh, we've essentially agreed to say uh, yes, when people ask us to do things, and not to say no. Uh, so it's it's responsibility, not necessarily authority. But you should, you know, there is no such thing as owning an Apache Software Foundation project. Uh, you should feel free to to stake your claim and go do something interesting with it. All right. Okay. So. I, I actually just one comment for you. You because you mentioned yes, run this foundation it costs a lot, a lot of money, and I saw Huawei is your sponsor, right? But why you not, why not you come into China to seeking more sponsors from here? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I thought it was a comment. No, we'd absolutely welcome more sponsors into the foundation. Um, and you know, one of the, the hard parts about that is, is that we don't necessarily target the funds to particular things, and that can be challenging if you want to use it for a particular purpose. So uh, I think a lot of those organizations that you're talking about actually have the opportunity to do things directly in the local community to make that happen. I'll add that uh, we don't send <laughs> We don't send people anywhere to go raise funds. Uh, so we have, we have two vice presidents of fundraising. Uh, we don't send them anywhere to go talk to people. So uh, the fact that you know, we, we don't have as many Chinese sponsors isn't because we're not sending people here, or maybe it is, but we're not sending people anywhere. <laughs> 也谢谢四位从远道而来，然后或者呃中国这边的 guest， 那请大家给他们掌声。Please stay on the stage for a little bit while because we're going to do lucky draw. All right, to cue the momentum up for the afternoon. So we have a lucky draw box there. We're going to do two round of lucky draw. All right, and let me tell you, the first round is a a bag. From Easy Mob, from our sponsor, and the second round is the tour to Microsoft Innovation Center this uh, this evening. So the total each has five, uh, five, uh, five, five seats, all right, or five back. So the first first round is for the back. I'll give you a brief introduction. We're now at the prize time. Then two and three, and in the two and six, there are four seats. There are many people who are watching the stream. They may be watching the stream. But if you look at the screen, 如果我念到名字号码，你不在这个房间里面没关系，你到签到处去，去拿这个，拿你抽到那个，那个那个单子到签到处去去换奖就可以了。那我现在宣布一下，我们这天的抽奖是什么哈？然后下午结束的时候还有啊、哦。那么现在抽奖是这样子，两轮。第一轮呢，我们是抽我们的这个呃这个伟大的赞助商环信，我太喜欢他们了，他们赠送五个精美的这个这个背包啊袋子。第二轮呢？是，今天我们特别特别挤出来的，各位有机会去今天晚上去参观五名，啊，到微软的亚太研发集团创新中心，他们有一个超级酷的一个演示，这个创这个创新中心五名，啊，今天晚上呢，给我给我们去看那个创新中心各种
最炫的这些新的科黑科技，然后还可以跟我们一起参加一个鸡尾酒会，跟这些大牛讲师们、大神们、女神们，大家一起聚玩，就五名啊。好 ，OK， we can start the first、uh, lucky draw. Ah,、uh, Kevin, Kevin, you, you are also one of the lucky lucky draw. Okay, okay, so just、uh, announce the number. That is for back. That is for 那个手提袋 OK. Ah,、uh, zero three one nine. 呃，三幺九，呃，有在场的举手，没有的话，我们就拿到那个前台去。OK， OK， David， thank you。Zero three four four， 来，零三四四，有没有电话码 ？OK， 来，来接生。零三三零，零三三零 ，OK， 哎，怎么都是三三开始？我都是跟三有关系，这怎么搞的？这零零三零，哎，就跟三是一个好好日子啊。OK， 这五位呢可以拿到，啊啊，对啊 ，sorry， 那 one one last one， 最后一个，这环信的这个精美的手是那个包。哎，果然还是三零三二三，奇怪，为什么都是三开头了？<笑> Okay. Uh, we're going to do the second round. After that, we could take a group photo quickly. Okay. All right. 然后再从云总这边先开始吧。现在是今天晚上的微软创新中心的参访以及晚宴。啊，终于一个没有删的了。零零幺六。Oh yeah. 这是最早来，今天最早来的，有没有在现场的？零零幺六，再赶快冲上来哦。Okay. 零四六五 ，OK， 好，这都不在现场，都是就是，哎，我们这个主场的这个中奖率不高啊。那举手，刚刚下来哪？拜拜，领导。Zero two one three， 零二幺三 ，OK。啊，零二幺三，赶快冲上来了，赶快赶快，恭喜恭喜，<笑>啊。你从这边拿那个零二幺三那个，啊对 ，OK， yeah， <笑> OK， 啊今天晚上啊，走 ，OK， 啊 ，zero three two four， 零三二四有没有在现场的？好，有就就不要害羞，然后穿上来啊 ，OK， the last one， 最后一个，零四四九。好，零四四九，今天三跟四比较多哈。记住，要买彩票就买这几个数字。哎，零四，赶快赶快来，来看看看，恭喜恭喜！看起来大奖还是在这个房间多一点。OK， 啊、uh, ，Let's take a group photo。那个帮我照一下那个房顶照。OK， please stand in the middle、yeah.。啊，大家先不要离开，我还有一个事情要宣布啊。Okay. Thank you, thank you.、Uh, we,、uh, we have a lunch box providing the、uh, uh, teacher's room,、uh, the speaker's room. That will be there for you. Okay. 啊，这样子，不好意思，我就讲讲两句废话哈。那个，我们下午是。两点整开始，在各个会议室，第一分会场在这里，第二分会场在二楼，第三分会场在三楼，第四分会场在二十二楼零二零六。好，所以呢，下午请两点钟啊准时。我们今天是非常准时的，今天结束时间也是刚刚好。啊，我们不等的哈，就是我们直准直接开始。好，谢谢大家，那下午见，谢谢。
看社正式成立的时候，那么有跟大家做介绍过看社的愿景啊、使命吗？刚开始有二十四家会员，到今天一百天的时候，我们已经有三十六家了。我们把呃开源之星这样的项目列表给建立出来啊，希望在我们大家积极的互动，产品啊还需要更进一步的打磨。你们自己的特点是什么？然后所以能胜任的。我们是根据各个成员他的特长和优势，然后让他们主动去承担、去加入、去担任这个组长的工作。开源项目其实就是说，大家如果真的觉得这事情大家都需要做，你喊一声，而且做出来的东西都是共享、都是开源的，其实可以很快凝聚到力量。多的后面加入的这个成员的话，也太可以了。他在里面很活跃，然后也可以成为这个组长啊，也可以来做。呃，我们就是很开放的一种模式。我已经看到了。